Hi there, this is Justin. In this video, I'm going to share with you the basics of data deduplication. First of all, what is data deduplication? Well, it's the process of removing duplicate rows of data in a data set. So why is this important? What's the issue with duplicate rows of data? Well, let's take a look at an example here of a table that I've created uh, for this uh, video. And we can see here we've got five rows of data. And if we look carefully, we can see the first two rows have duplicate values for ID, name, and count. Okay, I'm going to talk about extracted at in a minute. But it's clearly here, it's clear that these two rows have duplicate values for these three columns. Okay, now if I wanted to sum up count, for the users in this table, right? So let's just say I write a quick SQL query and I write some count from table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to count the count. I'm going to sum up the count for James, this user, twice, right? So obviously my numbers are going to be incorrect. So the main reason you want to remove duplicates is because in many cases, especially when looking at when working with um, standard integers or floats, um, you know, standard measures, you're going to run into a lot of problems and your data is just not going to be accurate. So as an analyst, often, or a data engineer, often you're going to want to start by um, dealing with duplicate uh, data and cleaning up your data. So the reason I included extracted ad is because many third party ETL tools that will extract data out of their sources and dump the data or replicate the data into a data warehouse will have their own, um, they'll add a bunch of additional fields to the extracted data. And the most important is going to be the timestamp of when the data was actually extracted. So assuming your you know your data sets are coming from a third party tool and even if they're not say you've written your own code to extract data you should include the timestamp of when the data was replicated so that if you do run into issues with duplications then you can actually implement this uh, fix or not fix this work this uh, solution that i'm going to cover in a second so Assuming this data was being replicated from a third party tool like Stitch Data or Fivetran or, you know, there's many um, third party extraction tools out there, then you may see some, you may see a, a timestamp here, which is added to the data set um, that isn't, you know, isn't part of the, isn't natively part of the data set. Um, so as long as you have a timestamp, which in of itself is not duplicated, right? Um, so we can see here, even though these two rows are duplicates for the first three columns, the extracted at is not, it's unique um, across these rows. Now keep in mind, just did this to see if I could catch you out. The name here, John is the same, but since ID is our unique identifier, um, we see we have values two and three. So these two rows aren't actually duplicates, even though the value for name is a duplicate, right? A duplicate is going to be um, a pure duplicate across all the relevant dimensions, uh, and in particular, the primary key of the table, right? So if the primary key here is ID, then we can say quite clearly that, you know, these are meant to be unique values. And therefore, these two rows are duplicates. So I hope that kind of explains the concept of um, duplicate data in um, in a regular in a standard table. So what's the solution? Well, if you've got this extracted at or this you know some timestamp, then we can implement this um, you know type of uh, this little. SQL um, piece of uh, SQL code to do that. So let me walk you through this. This is an example for um, de you know deduping de uh, data in a BigQuery table, but the concept is the same. And 
all the major databases will support um, you know row number so what we have here is we've got a, an inner query and then an outer query so the inner query is select star so select everything plus you know and we want to add a column row number this is a um, I forget the, the terminology, but this is, a, you know, one of the few, uh, you know, this function is a special type of function along with rank um, and dense rank, I think are the three in this grouping. Um, and I think they're window functions is what you would call them. Uh, then we have over and then we have this little piece here. This is why it's, it's a special type of function. So we want to partition by ID so essentially partition by is going to be for each unique, you know, whenever we see a new value, it's going to start the process over and then we ordering by extracted and descending. Okay. So in other words, what this little function, the row number function is going to do is going to give us, it's going to give us a count where the count is going to continue by the unique identifier in this case is ID and it's going to do that in order of the timestamp of when the data was extracted it's going to do that in descending order okay so if we ran this in a query against this table then we would get this right so we're bringing everything so that's the star and then we're going to add row number and it's going to go down it's going to partition by ID right and it's gonna order it by extracted at the timestamp in a descending order right so it's going to go the earliest and it's going to then count up um actually now that i think about it um yeah i got this wrong this is one and this is two because it's descending right so it's descending from the highest to the lowest we want the most recent value, right? So if the row has been replicated twice, often there's a reason for that. Maybe, you know, like the count might have been, well, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to get too confusing here, but essentially this little trick is going to always bring for us the most recently extracted row of data. So um, we can see here it would end up adding ones to all of these because once again these aren't duplicates the two three and four and in this case it's going to give put a one uh, for the most recent for the most recent um extraction for the the relevant id okay so that's the inner query then what we're doing is we selecting star except the extracted at because we don't really care about the extracted at we just want to bring our um Sorry, I actually forgot. A, okay, so select star, accept, extracted at. So we're going to bring everything except the extracted at uh, column where the row number is one. And I should have uh, cleaned this up. So in essence, we're going to get the following table at the end of the day. Um, yeah, sorry, let me make one other change. It should be extracted at and row number because we don't care about row number anymore because it's always going to be one. So at the end of the day, when we run that query, um, we're going to be left with this, which is uh, a deduped version of our table. So that's it. Um, I hope this was clear. Um, if you have any questions on this concept, need some additional help with this query to kind of explain different pieces of it, then um, let me know. In a nutshell, you just want to add a row on your, you know, your unique um, identifier, which is, you know, hopefully you've got a primary key. If you don't have one primary key, then it could be a combination. So. Um, either you need to create that ID or, you know, just update this partition by to take that into account, um, add your row number, and then just take everything except the fields you don't need and um, where the row number equals one.
that's assuming you're going to do descending, which makes the most sense. So that's it. Um, I guess one last point, if you're working with something like DBT, where you can do um, modular based, uh, like data mod modeling, then my suggestion is to always start with uh, deduping your tables, um, and then move into uh, more of like a renamed version of your raw data. And then after that, move into, you know, uh, like a production layer from that point on. So that's it. I'm going to stop here. Uh, if you do have any questions, please write them in the comment section below. And if you found value from this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. It does help uh, get the video in front of more analysts like yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.